here to talk about the image of Jerusalem in poetry, a selection of Arabic, English, and Hebrew poems. I hope uh, you'll be interested in this topic. So Jerusalem, uh, known as Al-Quds in Arabic, uh, is a city located in the Middle East and uh, holds significant religious importance for three Abrahamic religion of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. For Judaism, uh, the people um, worship to the Western Wall, also known as Wailing Wall, which is the remnant of the Second Temple, and uh, it's a very sacred, uh, a place of pilgrimage for the Jews. And for Christians, the Holy uh, Church of uh, Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is believed to be uh, the place of Jesus' crucifixion, burial, and resurrection. Uh, it's a holy place for the Christian and for Islam and the followers of Islam, the Dome of Rock uh, located on the Temple Mount is also a, a very important place because it is believed that it's the spot uh, which Prophet Muhammad ascended to the he heavens during the night journey. So these are the three places which are uh, physically and spiritually very important for this three religion. You can see the uh, picture which are very uh, showing their they are also having ancient uh, significance in history. Okay, <clears throat> but how they are important in the literature? Uh, because of this uh, significance, poet and author are trying to show their um, uh, emotional expression toward this uh, significant place. So, uh, for example, in Jewish literature, they try to show it as a symbol of hope, uh, redemption, and a connection to the divine. And in Christian writing, they're trying to mostly connect it with the theme in epic poems and allegorical works symbolizing spiritual pilgrimage and salvation. And for Islamic literature, they have uh, uh, celebrated the spiritual significance of Jerusalem, particularly in connection to the night journey of Prophet Muhammad. And uh, lately, in recent uh, century, mostly the uh, literature of uh, um, uh, resistance has appeared because of the conflicts taking place in the, uh, Jerusalem. So many poems and many <coughs> uh, novels and stories have appeared in this regard. So uh, we can see there also uh, they could express their, uh, this feeling in binary opposition, embodying themes of peace and war, love and hate, past and present, and other dichotomies and um, so it carries a symbolic, uh, symbolic um, um, images in the stories and also in the poems, which we will see it in the three, <coughs> uh, three poems written by three different nationalities and languages and three different religions. So the first one is Yehuda Amichai. He is uh, originally a German, but having the Israeli identity. The second one is William Blake, a British poet. And the last one, Mahmoud Darwish, he is a Palestinian poet, and all are well-known poets in their region. And uh, I'm going to discuss them one by one. So religion by William Blake, um, it is a part of his preface to the epic poem Milton. And in fact, Blake uh, is practicing uh, Christianity, not just in a very usual and ordinary way. He has a mystical view toward uh, Jerusalem. In the first line, he started to talk about the situation of England in his time, because he's belonging to the late 18th century and early 19th century. And he says that uh, he starts to uh, pose a question in the first line in his poetry. And did those feet in ancient time walk upon England mountain green? And was the holy lamb of God on England's pleasant pasture seen? So he is actually having a kind of literary allusion to the um, uh, English uh, folklore and uh, mythology that they believe that once uh, the Jerusalem was built in uh, England. So now he's asking them whether really Jerusalem was built in England, whether the Lamb of God, here this is biblical allusion, uh, referring to Jesus Christ, have he really passed over England? And he's uh, again asking in the second stanza, and was Jerusalem built here among these dark satanic mills? So again asking whether Jerusalem was really built here according to the folklores, according to the mythologies, really was built here. 
among these dark satanic milks, so the dark satanic milks is a kind of symbolic representation of industrial revolution in England because he believes that by this revolution, industrial revolution, the society has distanced itself from the spirituality. The people are thinking about mundane things and uh, they uh, don't follow religion anymore. They have taken away, being away from the moralities. So. In the third stanza, he's asking for divine interference. Bring me my bow, bring me my arrows, bring me my spear, bring me my chariot of fire. So, in fact, this is again a kind of uh, literary allusion. He's asking God to come and interfere and heal this uh, sick and uh, uh, stricken society. Come and heal it. Come and make a peace inside this society. So in the last stanza, he says that I will not cease this struggle, which is a kind of mental fight. And he says, I will not stop to uh, take action to, to, to purify this society, to purify the, the society, till we have built Jerusalem in England's green and pleasant land. So he's asking that, he's, he's, uh, uh, he's wishing that in future, Jerusalem will be built again in England and in this land, because this is again another biblical allusion to the time which says that uh, the Jerusalem will be, will be descend from heaven on the earth and the Jesus Christ with Jerusalem, they will all come to the earth in order to spread peace among the people in the world. So we can see here Jerusalem in Blake's poetry really doesn't uh, refer to the Jerusalem on the earth or uh, on, uh, it doesn't, doesn't have any geographical position. It is very spiritual. It is only emphasizing the Jerusalem in Bible and its spiritual um, significance is very important for William Blake. Let's go to the next uh, poem. So here um, in Jerusalem is written by uh, Mahmoud Darwish. So um, he is trying to emphasize the historical and uh, spiritual and cultural aspect of Jerusalem in his poem. So he says, in Jerusalem, and I mean, Within the ancient times, I walk from one epoch to another without a memory. He's, he's like a character walking in Jerusalem in order, to, uh, in order to tell the story of Jerusalem as a person without a memory. He's asking the prophets, you are the correct people, you are the best people to tell the story of Jerusalem. That's why in the third line he says, the prophets over there are sharing the history of the holy, ascending to heaven, and returning less discouraged and melancholy because love and peace are holy and are coming to town. So prophets are together. Here it is uh, referring to the um, time which the prophet had a spiritual travel to the heaven with other prophets. So he's asking that the prophets will come again back. They will tell the story of Jerusalem and they will bring love and peace to this holy land. Then he's um, speaking about stone. He's having a reference to the stone. And he says that, do the narrators disagree over what Light said about a stone? So here, stone is referring to, uh, is a metaphoric representation. Metaphor of stone, which is calling David, which is a striking, striking Goliath with a stone. It is a biblical reference or biblical allusion. And also referring to the kids who are uh, resisting with the stones in today Jerusalem is a kind of defense uh, for them. Then in the several other lines, we have a mention of Isaiah. Isaiah is a messenger. He says that Isaiah's messenger sprouts like grass from Isaiah's messenger mouth. If you don't believe, you won't be safe. This is the word of Isaiah. Isaiah is the prophet for the Jewish people, who, which is represented in the, <laughs> in the Old Testament. So he says that Isaiah is also preaching peace. And he says that if you, if you don't believe, you won't be saved. So repent your sin, about your sin, and live in peace in that way if you surrender to God. And then uh, he says that I 
I walk as if I were another, and my wound a white biblical rose. The white biblical rose is the representation of Virgin Mary, and my hands like two doves on the cross, hovering and carrying the earth. The two doves this is the representation of the Holy Spirit. So here we have allusion to another biblical allusion to the Christianity, bringing the significance of Virgin Mary and uh, also the, um, uh, the Holy Spirit. And then he says that I, I am transforming to a kind of bird because I want to actually go beyond the uh, restrictions of time and place and I will travel over this uh, Jerusalem in order to see everything together. But I think to myself alone, the Prophet Muhammad spoke classical Arabic. Here he brings another biblical allusion to Prophet Muhammad to say that Jerusalem is also an Arabic place and it is the place for Prophet Muhammad. And one of the important events in Islam happened in this land. So he's bringing the Arabic identity to Jerusalem. And at last he says that, then what? A woman soldier shouted, is that you again? Didn't I kill you? I said, you killed me and I forgot like you to die. So here we understand that this person is a dead person. This is a soul who is speaking that was killed by a woman soldier. And the soldier asking why I have killed you? What are you doing here? So it means that this is the way that the people in Jerusalem are living. Their, their life is to die, but they will never be detached from the land of Jerusalem. So his soul remained attached to Jerusalem and wandering aloud. And he wants to say being killed is a daily occurrence and they will never forget to die. So here in Mahmoud Darwish poem, we see he brings all the important spiritual uh, significance in Judaism, in Christianity, and in Islam to say that all these three religions can live together in peace, and the prophet is going to give us the message of love and peace in Jerusalem. So he's insisting on coexistence of these three religions in Jerusalem. Let's go to the last poem. Jerusalem is a port city by Yehuda Amichai. He is a, a German origin, but have, uh, has an Israeli uh, identity. And then um, he was born to a Jewish family. He wrote this poem, and he says that Jerusalem is a port city on the shore of ages of ages. So this is a kind of magic realism. We know that Jerusalem doesn't have any port, but he is presenting as a city of port because he wants to give it as an example of an important place that the Temple Mount is the great ship a pleasure yawl in splendor. The Temple Mount is a very important uh, place for the Jewish people. So he is comparing the Temple Mount as a ship in the port of Jerusalem. And people are on this temple and they are traveling to the sky, uh, to the everlasting sky. And uh, it's a kind of a religious journey. From the probes of her wailing wall, jubilant sails peer like passenger. So in this, in this ship, uh, we have the wailing wall as well, and the saints are there, and they are waving goodbye to every people. In that ship, there are Hasidim. Hasidim is members of a Jewish mystical movement, and they believe that uh, the God is present everywhere, and they are waving goodbye to the people around them. So um, uh, he is bringing all the uh, actually uh, Jewish uh, symbols in his poetry. And he says that policemen and flags and churches, high masts. So the police are, polices are at the, at the shore and they have flags and they are waving goodbye, goodbye to the people on the ship. Then uh, we have uh, another uh, Jewish um, uh, important symbol here, which is Yom Kippur. He, ha he says, the ram's horn sounds out sunset, one more, has set sail. Yom Kippur sailors in white uniform ascend between the ropes and ladders of tried and true prayers. Yom Kippur is a very important day for, the Ju uh, for Judaism. It is the day that people ask for repentance and they uh, are 
blessed by God. So he says the people are dressing in white uh, gowns, which is resembled the sailors. He is giving the sailor um, uh, dress as a, uh, as a kind of symbol for that uh, white cloth. And then he says that the prophets of market and gates and golden cap domes, Jerusalem is the Ven Venice of God. So it's really interesting that he's also bringing a commercial importance for this uh, ship, that for, this, uh, for this city. It means that Jerusalem not only spiritually important but also commercially important because it could be, be, be a kind of market. It could, bring, um, it could bring profits, like it is like a Venice of God. So Venice in the medieval time was a very important place of uh, uh, commerce and trade. So he is making a symbolic comparison between the port of Jerusalem and Venice. And on the other hand, he is also bringing a spiritual comparison that it could be a spiritual trade as well. People in Yom Kippur come to this place, flock together, they bring them, their sins to God, and on the other hand, ask God's for, uh, forgiveness in order to trade in this way, in, an, in a spiritual way. So uh, we see that in this poem, we have very strong Jewish uh, symbols in all of here. So no mention of other religion. He is only making Jerusalem as a ship for the Jewish and it is going to have a salvation for the Jewish people. So in conclusion, Jerusalem in Blake's poem is imaginary, heavenly, it's a utopia, and he wants to see England as Jerusalem. And he mentioned of golden city of Jerusalem that will descend from heaven. So he's longing for uh, Jerusalem, the end of the world, the God will dwell with Jerusalem in England. This is his wish. Then, Jerusalem in Darvish poem has historical religious importance. It's a place that em embraces Abrahamic faith, referring to Isaiah, Virgin Mary, and Holy Spirit, and also Prophet Muhammad. The, he, he presents Jerusalem as an injured city which is suffering and needs to be healed. And the people of the holy praise are deeply attached to it, even if they have died. So we can see in Darvish poem, we have all the elements of three Abrahamic religions. And lastly, Jerusalem in Amikai poem, it has a strong imaginary representation of Jerusalem as a port city. We have Temple Mount as a ship that always sails to this port, and a spiritual and show, uh, social and commercial importance of the city which is bringing as a symbol in different ways to be represented in Amikai poem. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you.